Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey, we're back on the bench. Um, we're still dealing with the five band, three lamp tube, 2020 uh, region receiver from China, little kit. When we ended up, I kind of finished the project last video and unfortunately we weren't able to get it to oscillate. We couldn't get it to turn the region up enough to oscillate just didn't seem like it was regening. So let me tell you what I've done since then. I've went through everything and checked everything over and couldn't really find anything wrong. Now, now on the diagram for building your coal, if you look here, it looks like they have quite a bit of separation between the tickler coal and the main coal, L1 and L2. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because when I built my coal, I built my coal quite a bit closer than they showed. And the reason that I'm talking about that is because what it turns out to be is I could not get this thing to go. And so first thing I did was I took and soldered some wires to the tickler coal of the board, brought them out where I could jump her and switch them because a common issue is you've got a tickler coal reversed. So instead of inducing positive feedback into the main coal, which then would be amplified and continue to increase your amplification, if you get the coals wound but the phasing out, what happens is it works the other way. You get a negative signal being induced in and you actually reduce the amplification. So I thought that could be the case because I wasn't getting any uh, oscillation of any kind. I wasn't picking anything up at all. I brought these wires out to make it easy to jump her and I jumpered around. Didn't help. So after I, I ran these two wires off the board where I could switch back and forth on the coal, I just got to feeling I just wasn't getting enough signal from the tickler into the main coal. So as a test, what I did was got me a little bit more wire and I wound another coal up closer. I hooked it up and it didn't, didn't work. So then I reversed them knowing that I wasn't sure which way it would need to be. And lo and behold, I started being able to oscillate. So that worked. So I'm just not getting enough signal from the one tickler coal into the main coal. So then what I did was I noticed that my region control here is backwards. The oscillations start when you get very close to the end on what would be the low side. So the pot's wired up backwards. So I thought, you dummy, you wired the pot up backwards. So I went back and I looked at what I did and I said, you know, you've swapped the outer wires. The problem is these wires are connected to that pot exactly as if the pot was soldered straight to the board. So if you're building this kit, bear in mind, that is backwards. Look at how the pot would go on the board if you just soldered it on the board and wire the two outer wires opposite because otherwise your region knob is going to work backwards. So I'm going to fix that. That's something that's got to be fixed. When you build your coal, I ran into another problem. Not only do you need to get the stickler coal right up against the main coal, another issue I ran into is when I switch the coals with the switch, it quits. I, it will only work when I'm using the full length of the coal. And that's because I wired my coal as the at the top, wound down through the taps and out the bottom. So I'm switching the top and the two taps. I'm sorry, I'm switching. Yeah, I'm switching the top and the two taps. And so what happens is if I'm not on the full length of the coal and I switch to the middle tap, for example, the end of my coal is no longer carrying an RF. It's not being picked up there. It's taken away. That coal part, part of the coal is removed from the circuit. And so my tickler is now not up next to a active coal. It's got a separation and it quits working. So you need to wind the tickler to the end of the coal that's always active. And that way when you switch, it doesn't change. It's still next to an active segment of the coal. So that's a boo-boo I made. And so we're going to redo this coal completely to fix all that. We're going to swap the two wires back here on the board, the two outer parts of the pot. We're going to swap them around to reverse the direction of that operation. That should put us in good shape. The problem I'm going to have is I epoxied this, the tube down, as you, can, as you know. So I don't know how hard it's going to be to get that off. It might be quite difficult, but I'm going to get it off one way or another, and we're going to fix this coal, and we're going to make it right, and we're going to get this thing working, and this is going to be the last video for this until it shows up in our competition. Another little bit of news, our next kits came in, so we'll be jumping into this, finish this up, we'll be jumping into this 
probably in the next video or the video after that, we'll be jumping in to rebuild, to build this one. This is a transistorized shortwave uh, receiver. It's a region just like this, but it's all transistor. So we're going to, uh, we'll be doing that in an upcoming video. Let me try to pop this coal off, get started on rebuilding the coal. I'll come back, show you what I'm doing. All right, I'm back. And here's what we've done. I had to take a saw and cut this off right flush with the wood to get it off, but I got it off. And I need to take my little ground test lead off, but I rewound my coal. As you can probably see, no gap. Your main coal's on the top, then your tickler's immediately below it here. Of course, the antenna coal wraps around the main coal. And so that's the greens here. Here and here's my antenna wrapping around it. And the tickler goes here. And of course, there's, if you can make out the taps, maybe over here, you get around right, you might be able to see the taps. And so everything's wired back up with the tickler coal up tight. And one of the big changes was <clears throat> making the taps on the end away from the tickler. In other words, the beginning of the coal for the main coal starts right up against the tickler. Very important. So now actually my fan switch actually allows me to keep getting regeneration even, even when I'm in the shorter coals because the main section of the coal is what's next to the tickler. So as I shift out to these taps, I'm not disconnecting the part of the coal that's up against the tickler. The other thing I did was reverse the wires back here on the board for the regen pot. They are backwards. If you look at your pot, if you take your pot and let's see, I've got a pot laying over here. No, of course not. Not handy. If you take a pot, oh, I do right here. If you take your pot and you think about putting it in the circuit board, you know, just putting it down in the circuit board and you think about the that wiring and then you follow that wiring just extend those leads out to this pot to go on the other side it will be backwards your region will be maximum all the way counterclockwise and off all the way clockwise so when you wire it up and you put these extender wires on there go ahead and swap the two outer leads is all you need to switch because the wiper doesn't change just swap the two leads and by doing so, you'll make the pot turn the correct way. It'll turn clockwise to increase regen then, which is easy enough to take care of. So, little tip on building. Now, let me show you what I created. I'm going to pop it up on the screen here. Okay, so that's a little diagram I did. You can capture it right there off the video, or I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to the links electronics lab Dropbox location where I put stuff for you guys It'll be a link will take you right over to that diagram you can download it so if anybody's building one of these um, to help keep from driving themselves crazy you know we want to uh, make it easy for you let me make all these mistakes figure out how to do things and then we'll turn around and post that diagram now you can download that diagram and if you walk through that diagram and follow the winding of the coal and where to hook it on the board you'll come out great Remember, L1 and L2 are swapped. The diagram denotes that. And it's all wired up. So you wire it. You don't swap them. You wire it just the way the schematic shows. I've done the swapping for you. And it should work then. Now, why does my tickler coal need to be so tight up against here? I don't know. Maybe my tubes are a little weak. I'd love to throw it on the, uh, the tube tester. But uh, these are odd tubes. And your typical tube testers won't test them. Um, I'm sure there's some tube tester that will, but you know, I've got that really nice one that uh, we uh, renovated and you know, it's, it's like one of the top tube testers and it will not test these tubes. If it will, if somebody can tell me it will and get me the information, the book, the book doesn't show these tubes in it. Anyway, that's where we are. So I guess what we're ready to do now is let's turn it on. I am. Um, and we'll take the mic off, sorry for any noises, and we'll put it up here. And let's see if we can get it to go into oscillation. So let's turn her on. Turn the volume up. There it is. And no 
notice that the knob, I'll hold the knob up here, you can see, it's doing that at the very top end now. So that's the region's now knob is now turning the right way. At this point, we are ready to go ahead and get this thing hooked up to an antenna. And I'm going to hook it up to my loop outside. Uh, it's kind of early in the afternoon yet for me to do this. So I'm going to wait till it gets a, you know, the sun goes down, short wave will come up. Probably about seven, eight o'clock tonight, I will shoot the next segment that you're going to see me jump to now. And we'll try to see if we can get any stations, what we can tune in, what, what we can do. I'll go ahead and pull this ground test lead for the scope. I was trying to use my oscilloscope troubleshoot. I'll get it off. We'll go ahead and get it set up and I'll show you what we can receive with it. And then that's going to be the end of this series. Okay, let me cover one more thing. Why I was confused about putting the pots and stuff on here. Why the board is looks like it's designed to have the parts put on there. One of my viewers wrote in and commented and he pointed out Something very obvious. I don't know why I didn't pick up on this, but I appreciate him pointing it out to me. Is you can buy this kit three different ways: just the board, the board with the parts, and then the board with the parts, the base, and the little front. So if you weren't buying it as the complete kit, but just the board and the parts, or just the board, you wouldn't have anything to mount your pots and stuff on. So that's why you have places on the board to do it. And he's absolutely right. It makes total sense. I just didn't think about it. I don't know why, you know, being knucklehead as usual. So anyway, that's that's the mystery to that. So that's one thing. Remember, you're going to remote your stuff. Remember, you're going to need some extra wire. They don't give you enough. Um, one thing is the same commenter pointed out, they sent him a battery holder for a different battery. Um, I think he said it was an 18665 uh, Li-Ion battery holder, which is like 3.7 volts. Um, and as he pointed out, poof, it would have blown his tube as soon as he hooked them up. So be careful what they send you. You want to be using like a D-cell one and a half volt to heat the tubes. Anything more than that, anything over one and a half volts, you're going to need to worry about burning up the tubes. I recommend you add another 9 volt in series. I think it runs way too too uh, low a voltage with a single battery. I think you're going to have better luck this way. Actually, uh, it says it can run up to like 90 volts. I don't know that I would go that crazy, but higher volts is probably going to help, you know, for the plates. Remember the coal, the winding that I showed you, providing the diagram to help you out. On that diagram, it shows you the wiring on the switch, so you don't have to go through trying to figure that out. It shows you clearly how to do that. I think that's the main issue. Swap the wires on the pot for the regen. Like I said, the two outer wires, swap them. Um, other than that, I think that pretty well will help you get one of these things built. So hopefully it's a, it's been a benefit. I'll see you in a little while, and we'll have this thing hooked up to an antenna, and we'll see what we can pick up on the shortwave bands with it. All right, we're set up. I made a little change. I unsoldered the speaker and put the uh, jack in to put the amplified speakers on because uh, the audio is just not that powerful in this thing. It was very hard to hear. I mean, you could hear the station, but you had to be real close and such. And I want to be all y'all to be able to hear. And when we do the shootout, we're going to be using these speakers on all the radios. So that way uh, we're looking at it from a realistic point of view. The amp just doesn't seem to amp It'll drive the speaker on a strong station. Weak stations are very quiet. So let's give this thing a try. Thank you. 
city paper is shutting down. A weekly connection to Twin Cities culture, now just a 41 year Okay, that's on one coal setting. Let's look at a different coal setting. So two-handed operation is is typical with these radios. The measures like pay transparency which would require companies to disclose wage data allowing for a clear review of authorities in Slovakia. The labor code also requires employers to disclose salary conditions and job advertisements, and in the future, it will also be mandatory for employers to disclose the. Okay, let's try the, th Here's the third call setting. This will be on the shortest call. Some French. Okay, it's all three bands. So it definitely works. We've got a functional radio. I would say it works better than the R10. Uh, tested under the same circumstances, same antenna, everything. I, I would say this works better. I can I can pull more stations clearly out with this. I can the stations that I would pull out with the R10 weren't as clear as the stations I get clear on this. There you go. We will know more when we put them together and test under the same circumstances. And so we've got another radio to put into the shootout. Either the next video or the following video will start on the transistorized regen kit that we got in today. And so I'll see you then. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for hanging out during this series. Hope you learned something. Hopefully this will be helpful to you. And especially if you want to build one of these radios. And if you will, hit the subscribe button. If you liked what I, you saw, hit the like button. And if you want to make sure you catch every video I do, hit the little notify bell. Hope to catch you in the next video.